state of business on our television. I'm Ashin Sunny Birasinghe. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. Government will review MCC agreement at an general informed Supreme Court. Country's growing informal sector is not effective to its fiscal policy, says Central Bank top official. News in detail. The signing of the Millennium Challenge Corporation Agreement was making headlines over the past few days and it was a topic of interest at many presidential election campaigns. Meanwhile, Attorney General Dapula de Oliveira has informed the Supreme Court today that the government decides to review the Millennium Challenge Corporation Agreement which was to be signed between the former government and the United States. The Millennium Challenge Corporation of the U.S. government approved a grant of 480 million U.S. dollars to Sri Lanka to execute a special transport development program covering the Colombo metropolitan area to reduce the traffic congestion and to promote the improvement of land administration process. However, key stakeholders in the country had mixed opinions on signing this agreement. Meanwhile, Attorney General Dapula de Oliveira informed the Supreme Court today that the government decided to review the Millennium Challenge Corporation Agreement. Speaking on behalf of the Attorney General, Deputy Solicitor General Farzana Jamil further informed the judge bench of the government's decision, asking not to take any steps to reach the agreement until the review is completed. The Government Medical Officers Association, Attorney at Law Darshana Veera Dua and Venerable Anguruvalle Jinananda Thero had filed fundamental rights petitions against the Millennium Challenge Corporation Agreement with the US. The fundamental rights petitions filed against the signing of the MCC agreement seeking an order declaring that the decision taken by the previous government to ink this deal is in violation of the constitution were called before the five-judge bench of the Supreme Court this morning. The petitions were scheduled to be taken up again on the 25th of March next year. The process of changing the Colombo Port City Development Project as the Colombo Financial City Project under the UNF administration will be reviewed by a panel of experts. Cabinet spokesman Dr. Ramesh Patran revealed that the Cabinet of Ministers has taken the decision and a committee has already been appointed for the purpose. Czech Port City Colombo Private Limited, a unit of China Communications Construction Group, has reclaimed 269 hectares of land in which the last administration proposed to set up a financial city with special laws. The last administration had proposed to set up a Colombo Financial City Commission, an advisory committee and arbitration centre, a Colombo Financial Court. New government has planned to review an investment zone and laws proposed on a financial city to be built on land reclaimed by a Chinese company in Colombo. The cabinet of ministers this week approved the setting up of a committee to review laws in the financial city as taking into account new socio-economic conditions, cabinet spokesman Mr. Dr. Ramesh Patrana said. He also said that the committee will be made up of two experts to review legal matters in all other sectors such as economic matters, urban development, engineering, local government and regulations, financial and commercial matters, socio-economic matters will be entrusted with one expert for each. The Cabinet of Ministers last Wednesday approved the proposal by Prime Minister Mahidra Rajpaksha to reveal the amended scope of the project and procedure used to revise the project. President Gotabe Rajapaksa assured that media freedom will not be hindered in any form during his tenure and media is free for any reasonable criticism. President Rajapaksa, addressing the heads of media institutions at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday, asserted the assistance from the media to fulfill the aspirations of the general public. President Gotabe Rajapaksha spoke to the heads of media institutions at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday for the first time after he was elected as the President. The President said he expected all media institutions to fulfill their due obligation towards the country while engaging in favourable media reporting to uphold the country's reputation. He stressed that the image of the country plays a vital role in bringing in investments and enhancing economic cooperation internationally and therefore to understand that wider responsibility in building a good image about the country. President Rajpaksha also told the media heads to assist in enhancing the efficiency of politicians and public officials and in eradicating corruption from the society. He also reminded that the economic development is another key factor among the people's expectations and the media's role to achieve it. President also appreciated the city beautification efforts and the enthusiasm of wall paintings currently underway across the country. 
A total of 26 UNP parliamentarians submitted a letter to party leader Rani Vikramasinghe requesting him to convene a working committee meeting before 20th December. Meanwhile, addressing a media briefing today morning, UNP parliamentarian Mayanta Desanayake says that the United National Party requires not only reforms in its leadership, but also a complete restructure advocating to the needs of the grassroots level in order to face a general election steadily. There has to be policy decisions that has to be taken, there has to be policy changes that we have to make. We have to structurally also reorganize the party in terms of the districts level, the electorate level. So there are many things that we have to do within the party uh, before we face a general election. It's not just necessarily the leadership of the party. I think we have to look at, rethink and really reorganize ourselves in a way that we can win a general election. Huh? It's not about positions alone. It's, it's not about positions alone. It's about getting it right, getting, listening to the people. They have taught us a lesson. So we have to listen to the people and listen to our voters, listen to our membership in the grassroots level and in the electorate level and reform and reorganize the party in a way that we can face a general election and win. President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka, Jagat Pereira, stresses that Sri Lanka lacks an adequate legal system to punish people who are involved in corruption and that certain regulatory systems are outdated. In simple sense, anyone using the power, the authority for the personal benefit is considered as corruption. The question we have is, we in Sri Lanka does not have adequate legal system to bring those who are involved with the corruption. The bribery and corruption laws are 25 years old. In 1994 was the last legislation came in. And it does not actively give the powers to the authorities to take action. So in my view, it is not easy to teach what is corruption and why we should go against to the adults. It has to be for the, the children who are in the school who are not exposed to the, this kind of corruption. And I have openly told to Mr. Jayamana, the Director General of COPOC, it is not enough we take someone to the custody at the lower end of the society. If you want to do this, it has to be done at the top level and if you do not do that, corruption is not going to stop. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Director of Economic Research Department at the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Dr. C. Amara Sekar says that country's growing informal sector is not effective to the fiscal policy of the country. Speaking at the launching ceremony of the 2019 Human Development Report in Colombo last Tuesday, he thus called the government to pay special attention to this issue in escalating the growth and productivity of the country. Sri Lanka's shadow economy, grey economy or the informal economy is quite large. It's uh, larger than uh, the, the world average, although it is improving, it is still large. large uh, 35%, uh, we have a 35% grey economy. So when you take the, the, the most uh, important government policies, monetary policy and fiscal policy, what you see is, uh, these more related to fiscal policy, what you see is that uh, fiscal policy is the the best policy to address inequality. But the use of fiscal policy is not very effective when there is a very large informal economy in a country. So there are two sides uh, to this story. One is that uh, when you say the informal economy is large, it could be the poorest of the poor. We are probably talking about the poorest of the poor and the richest of the rich as well. So this is something that the government will have to address going forward. The One Trans Work Square Private Limited wins the title of Best Mixed Use Development for its Triad of Towers, called the One Sri Lanka, beating eight other nominees at the Property Guru Asia Property Awards 2019 held in Bangkok in Thailand.
The Property Guru Asia Property Awards is a highly regarded accolade recognizing excellence in real estate, development, design and innovation. The event saw the property developer, the One Transwork Square Private Limited, securing the title of Best Mixed Use Development Asia for its triad of towers called the One Sri Lanka beating eight other nominees from Australia, China, Malaysia, Philippines and Myanmar. This mixed-use development site comprises a combination of hotels and branded residences, a luxury retail mall, multiple-storied car parks, banquet halls, a collective of dining experiences including a sky bar, business offices and a helipad atop the one to complete the canvas of opulence in the sky. The 80-storey, 326-metre Ritz-Carlton Tower will house the Ritz-Carlton Hotel and Residencies, while the second tower, which stands at 310 metres and covers 77 floors, will house the JW Marriott Hotel and Residencies. This is a very important uh, milestone uh, for us and uh, a recognition of our efforts uh, over the last many years. We were selected out of uh, eight iconic developments in the region, uh, in the whole Asia region, which included countries like Australia, Thailand, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, uh, amongst other countries. So um, it was judged by uh, at least 20 judges of very senior rep reputation of architects and others uh, among these eight iconic developments, and uh, uh, we were chosen for the award. So I think this is a very big thing for us and for Sri Lanka. Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardhana requested the SARC member countries to take concrete action to improve intra-trade in the region without compromising security concerns. He made these remarks at an event to commemorate the 35th SARC Charter Day in Colombo last Tuesday. Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardhana participating at an event to commemorate the 35th SARC Charter Day last Tuesday as organized by the SARC Chamber of Commerce and Industry in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Federation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Minister Gunawardhana addressing the gathering underlined the need to address the current unsatisfactory intra-trade figures that currently stand below 6% in the South Asia region that host over 20% of the global population. He also compared ASEAN as an example for SARC to replicate and that the ASEAN region has over 22% intra-trade in a region of less than 9% world's population. While recognizing the existing strong policy framework in the SARC region for trade expansion, the foreign minister also called for flexibility in trade negotiations to buttress the smaller economies in the region including Sri Lanka. He also emphasized the need to protect the environment, which is a challenging issue for the region, faced with unprecedented natural disasters and erratic weather patterns. The Charter Day event was attended by the Colombo-based SARC diplomatic missions and the business community. Now, a detailed analysis of the review on the stock performances for the past week and a stock forecast for the coming week will be brought to you by a subject expert at the First Capital Holdings. Uh, this week the market saw a bit of a downtrend amidst the decline in turnover levels uh, as the festive season uh, approaches. Profit taking in uh, most counters were observed as the market recorded uh, losses on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, however, after the poor holiday on uh, Wednesday, uh, the SPI reversed into the green mainly on Thursday with heavy gains in LOLC holdings uh, following some speculation on the counter. However, the market remained uh, stagnant on uh, Friday with uh, lower turnover levels. Uh, foreign activity uh, remained on the high side, uh, primarily on the foreign selling uh, component, uh, with uh, continuous foreign outflows witnessed uh, throughout the week, uh, specifically in Commercial Bank and John Keels Holdings. Looking at the upcoming week, uh, we expect market activity to remain a bit uh, low uh, in the coming week uh, with the upcoming uh, festive season. The overall bows uh, may remain uh, volatile but uh, uh, stagnant. Uh, with low turnover levels and volume. Uh, we expect foreign activity